Today we take a look at the All Progressive Congress's readiness for July 16th governorship election in Oshun State. And few dead, two injured as bandits attack Buhari's convoy en route to Dora. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anako. As the clock ticks daily to the D-Day in Oshun State for the gubernatorial elections and the flurry of political activities and intrigues that accompanied President Muhammad Buhari, Baba Jide, uh, Governor Baba Jide Somolu of Lagos State, his Kanu State counterpart Abdullahi Ganduje, and traditional monarchs have endorsed the candidature of Governor Adebwega Uyitola for another term in office. Now, the incumbent governor of the state um, who is seeking re-election said in a recent debate that workers have always received their full salaries since the start of his administration. Now, ahead of the governorship polls, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has also said that it has taken a tough stance on those planning to engage in vote buying and vote selling. The chairman spoke against the backdrop of alleged massive vote trading that characterized the just-concluded Ekiti State gubernatorial elections, vowing that the, threat, the trend, I beg your pardon, would be curbed in Saturday's July 16th governorship polls in Oshun and, of course, the 2023 general elections. Now, joining me to discuss uh, the happenings in Oshun is Olani at DBC Toke. He is a special advisor to Oshun State Governor on Works and Transportation. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, Nigerians. Uh, you're welcome and thank you for having me. Great. Uh, let's start by um, looking at Governor uh, uh, um, Oyetala's trend and all that he's done um, in his first tenure in office. He's obviously seeking a re-election and hoping that the votes of the people uh, would bring him back in office. Why would the average Oshun person want to cast their votes for Governor Oyetala? Um, thank you very much. Um, I think that the reason for um, reasonable electorates of um, Osho State to have Governor Adebe Igeritala back in power is to show gratitude for his sterling performance in his first term in office. Um, what I mean, um, here is a man who came into power um, and as soon as he came to power, he had a long run battle for a year. And after that, we had COVID-19 that uh, ravaged the whole world. Um, so that in totality, we can say that he has spent something close to like two years doing the actual job of governance. And within this span of two years, he has done tremendously well to improve the living conditions of the average also state indigent. Um, he started by ensuring that um, he put a lot of priority to their welfare and health care by revitalizing more than 300 primary health care centers, not only the physical structures, but also the uh, medi uh, medical equipment, um, medications, and the personnel, the, the complement of personnel to, to, to take care of these uh, facilities. Then he met a huge infrastructure deficit, deficit um, uh, on grant, and he has, so far as we speak now, um, touched all the nose and crannies of Oshun State in terms of improving the road conditions, the bad road conditions, the metal grant. There are many roads that were last touched 30 something years ago, 34 years ago, 27 years ago. His Excellency came in to uh, work on these roads, and today those communities are enjoying the dividends of democracy. Uh, important cities like between Ada and Ibadjo in the uh, in the uh, uh, Osho Centre, like uh, Muru Yakuyo, uh, in the uh, Osho East. Uh, 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 so all these facilities, the um, Oshobo, Ejibo Road, the 25 kilometer long road, he has put them back to shape, and everybody is happy with what he's doing. He has done tremendously well in the area of education, in the area of um, agriculture, 
and the another important area that deal with human welfare. So I think that the people of Osun State are yearning to have him back to come and repeat the magic performance indeed he has done in this first time in office. Let's break down some of the things because it's one thing to say, oh, the governor's done this and that. Let's break it down. You talked about the health facilities. Now, um, in Nigeria, back in the day, it was very easy to work, walk from your home to a health post. Now we're seeing a disappearance of those health posts. And these was, this, this was something that was accessible to the average person before they could go to the, um, you know, let's say uh, the teaching hospital. That was most available to the simple person. What has Governor Yetala done in reviving those health posts and making sure that health care is available to the average person, not just in the city, but of course in the rural areas? Yeah, thank you very much. In Osun State, we have um, three, uh, we have uh, uh, 30 local government areas. What Governor Yetola has done is to ensure that there is one primary health care center in each ward so that you don't have to travel far from your house to go and receive health care services from the government hospital. And that's a very huge plus for our people here because you don't have to travel any long distance there to reach uh, the, the people that will take care of your health. And that's bringing back the health facilities and uh, care to the people at the, the, uh, at the, at the um, grassroots uh, level. So for me, this is a very huge achievement which um, has been recommended by, by people to other states that are aspiring to also make their people happy. What is the monitoring process like? Because it's another thing uh, to have these health posts opened. And sometimes you have one doctor uh, and one nurse and sometimes you see nobody. It's empty. It's very difficult to get access to somebody to attend to these people. Is there a monitoring system in place? Uh, because it's what, it, it, you can set these places up with cut it, the red tape and then have the jamboree. But who oversees the day-to-day -day activities to make sure that it's really working and then the people can actually say that the government has done something? Uh, well, we have the Commissioner for Health and his team, and they have a monitoring team that actually uh, go around um, on a regular basis to ensure that these primary health care centers are actually serving the needs of the people. The uh, health care centers are equipped with enough Educations with um, doctors and nurses that actually serve the people. Um, these are very valuable facts, and the people of Washington State can bear witness to all we are saying. It's not feeding to anyone. Um, anytime you go to any of the healthcare primary centers, you see the people uh, serving the interests of the people. Let's talk about agriculture. Um, there is good land in Austrian State, and um, the most of the most of 2021, several states in the southwest had issues with headers and, of course, farmers dealing with the conflict uh, of their farmlands being encroached upon or, you know, um, destroyed. Uh, Austrian State was barely in the news for that. But what has the government done in the area of agriculture to boost production? Uh, thank you very much. Um, because of the peaceful nature of our governor, he has set up a committee of uh, farmers and herders so that there are no areas of conflict between them. So what we have, what, what we have in other states, we don't have here in national states. Wherever any dispute arises, the committee comes in to settle things amicably between herders and farmers. So farmers and herders, each group is doing their thing peacefully without problem. Now, um, the farmers in Osun State, um, particularly the young farmers, the majority of them were given loans and grants to work on the farms, uh, given the necessary uh, inputs like fertilizers and the even government land to work on them. Same goes for those who are in the poultry industry. So it's something that is an ongoing thing and we are seeing improvement in the area of agriculture in our state. You are the special advisor on works and transportation. Let's talk about that. Um, I was talking about infrastructural programs other than, um, you know, the health post that uh, the primary health care that the governor has um, put in place for the people of Oshun State. What are the other things? Um, we're looking at um, 
housing, we're looking at transportation. How has um, the government impacted in these areas? Well, thank you very much. Let me first of all talk about um, the interventions of um, uh, the government on the issue of um, uh, road infrastructure. Um, as we talk now, the state government is uh, um, working on about 64 routes across the states. Uh, when I mean, when I, when I say 64 routes, I wrote it up into the completed ones, the ongoing ones, and the one yet to be awarded. Um, Gradually, um, we were able to uh, the construct to construct um, a flyover within Oshobo Township at the heart of Oshobo. That's the, the popular Olaya intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to reduce the rate of accidents and condition uh, in that uh, at that hub, um, we have been able to construct a 20 kilometer long. Uh, stretch of road between uh, uh, on Yana Ara uh, to Ejibo, and also another five kilometers um, uh, road within Ejibo Township. We have been able to work on uh, a 13 uh, kilometer long road between Ada and uh, Igbajo. Uh, this is a road that was, not, was touched last about 32, 33 years ago. We have been able to work on uh, an eight kilometer long road uh, at um, Yakoyo, uh, Ashipa, uh, till the um, end of uh, Ibadanife Express Bridge. That also, that road was also touched 27 years ago. We have a long list of roads that have been completed. The ones we met on grant, we are still uh, working on them and um, we are embarking on uh, new roads to make life um, easier for the motoring public. Okay. In our state. Uh, that is um, as far as um, road infrastructure is uh, concerned. Okay, okay. Um, because we do not have too much time, let's go into yeah. the politics of the um, APC and, of course, what people should expect for, um, for the election day. Now, there has been uh, talks um, about a reconciliation of sorts uh, between the former governor, Alpha Regweshola, and the sitting governor. But then as we speak, uh, we hear that they are yet to reconcile, of course. And this is uh, a report that we got from the factional chairman of the All Progressive Congress in the state. Why is there a faction in the APC in Oshun State? And if the governor of, obviously is the leader of the party in the state, why is it taking so long for these lines to be blurred? If you must win the election uh, come um, the 16th, why has uh, all those grounds not been covered? Well, thank you very much. Uh, as far as I am concerned, uh, APC in Ocean State is one. And uh, Governor Debe Yoritola is the leader of our party in the uh, Ocean State. That is number one. Number two, um, in any situation, in any um, circumstance, there are always misunderstandings, there are always disagreements. And as brothers and sisters, as members of the same family, uh, we'll come around to sort things out ourselves. Um, for me, uh, when people disagree on the basis of principle, uh, somehow, sometime, they have to meet together to iron gray areas and work together. And I believe has that the our governor party made, has the governor hard has governor Yechala made that attempt to reach out to the former governor, Alpha Aragwishala, to have that conversation because you're saying that they have to come together and make peace. But has anybody done or taken the first step? Because again, a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. It's okay and diplomatic for you to say that the APC in your state is one. But is it really? It's all fine and well. We hear that there have been some defections from the People's Democratic Party into the APC. But is that a sign that the party is on the right track, even when the house within itself is divided? Well, what I'm saying in essence um, is this that um, the governor, um, Alaji Seaka Adewe-Igoritola, has always been a man that is um, peaceful, that has been looking for means of 
putting the house in order. So the, 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 the moves are always ongoing. But these are not things that you will see out, outside. They are underground moves. And that, that's why I told you that uh, uh, very soon you will see the outcome of all these, these moves from across the device. How much, um, how much um, education of auto education has the APC been able to do within the state? Now, Einek is talking about fears of insecurity, and they're also talking about the issue of vote buying. Uh, we saw what happened in a kitty state. Um, a lot of vote buying. We're still hearing uh, calls for a cancellation of that election. What's the what what what's the hope? that the APC would do right in this election, knowing that it is uh, the, power, the party in power, would we see a strong arming of people in this election, or are you going to allow it to be free, fair, and credible? Well, let me tell you that because of the sterling performance of APC in the state, State, um, we have um, embarked on a lot of um, voter sensitization. We have... Um, embarked on a lot of uh, voter education so that uh, our team supporters and uh, 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 members would not have to make any mistake uh, this time around to avoid void votes, to avoid the uh, other negative uh, development uh, during the time of uh, election. So our men are full soldiers on the field, educating people, going from hamlet to hamlet, from less city to less city, from township to township, to educate our members and uh, our supporters and the uh, other members of the public, the uh, voting public. I will say that um, we do not have any intention to buy votes from anyone. This is simply because our performance is there for, I mean, our performance speaks for us. And people in this state are happy with APC government in power and they will not get induced by anybody to sway they are conscious uh, to do something different. So for me and for my party APC, we do not have any plan to buy votes from anybody. And we can assure you that without even being that, our people are solidly behind us and they will vote us back to power. On I the issue of security, okay. um, I believe that... Um, sorry? Go ahead, go ahead. I, I, believe that, I believe that people charged with the security... Um, of uh, I mean, during elections are uh, up to the task and they will do their job. And my party APC is ready to cooperate with the security people to ensure free, fair uh, election in our state. And does the government, or will you give us your word as a representative of the government of uh, uh, Oshun State, that the average voter will feel safe enough to go out and cast their votes without fear of any violence breaking out at any polling unit across the state? We are confident that um, the average voter in Nozu State uh, will feel secure enough to exercise their franchise, their civic uh, rights and duties to uh, Nigeria. All right. Well, Olanio Adebisi Toke is the special advisor to the Australian State Governor on Works and Transport. Thank you so much for discussing with us. We appreciate your thoughts. You are welcome. My name is Olanio Adebisi Toke. Toke. Not from All right. Toke. Toke. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much for speaking with us. Yeah. Well, that's it on this segment. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be looking at what happened in Dora. Of course, the pre-team um, of Mr. President was attacked by a 300-man terrorist gang. We'll talk about it after this break.